September 28th. Jesus answered and said unto her, But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. John 4, 13 to 14. Select your choicest, sweetest temporal mercy and say, is it satisfying to your soul? Does it, in its fullest enjoyment, leave no want unsupplied, no desire unmet, no void unfilled? Does it meet the cravings of the mind? Go into the garden of creature blessing and pluck the loveliest flower and taste the sweetest fruit. Repair to the cabinet of friendship and select from thence its choicest pearl. Pass round the wide circle of earth-born joy and place your hand upon the chief and the best. It is the feeling of your heart and the language of your lips. I am satisfied. I want no more. Does it quench the spirit's thirst? Does it soothe the heart's sorrow? Does it meet the mind's cravings? Does it quiet the troubled conscience and lift the burden from the aching heart? Oh no, the height, the depth, the length, the breadth exclaim, it is not in me, am I in God's stead? But how blessed is that which truly satisfies Listen to the gracious words of the Savior. Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Did language ever utter a sentiment more true than this? Jesus is an all-satisfying portion. They who have tried him can testify that it is so. His is not a satisfaction in name, but in reality and in truth, there is a felt and realized sense of holy satiety. The mind is content. The believer wanders no more in quest of happiness or of rest. He has found them both in Jesus. He is satisfied to stake his eternal all upon the finished work of Emmanuel, to live upon his smile, to abide in his love, to draw upon his grace, to submit to his will, to bear his cross, to be guided by his counsel, and afterwards to be received by him into glory. The Lord Jesus imparts contentment to the soul in which he enters and dwells. Vast as were those desires before, urgent as were those necessities, insatiable were those cravings, and restless as was that mind, Jesus has met and satisfied them all. The magnetic power of his love has attracted to and fixed the mind upon himself. He satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. The believer is satisfied that God should possess him fully, govern him supremely, and guide him eternally and be the sole foundation from where he draws his happiness, gratefully acknowledging, All my springs are in you. Thus is he content to be just what and just where his father would have him. He is satisfied that he possesses God, and that possessing God, he is all good in God. He knows that his father cares for him, that he has undertaken to guide all his steps, and to provide for all his needs. The only anxiety which he feels as to the present is how he may the most glorify his dearest, his only friend casting the future on him in the simplicity of childlike faith. Nor is the satisfaction thus felt limited to the present state. It passes on with the believer to eternity. It enters with him into the mansions of bliss. There, in unruffled serenity, in unalloyed joy, in unmingled bliss, it is perfect and complete. You will show me the path of life, in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Happy saint, who have found your all in Jesus, glorified spirit, would we recall you to these scenes of sin, of suffering, and of death? No, the needle of your soul no longer varies and trembles. 
diverted from its center by other and treacherous objects. Jesus fixes it now and fixes it forever.